George Carlin's stage persona and his presence I watched for years and years. The first time I ever saw him do it, of course, was Carlin and Carnegie, one of the first HBO specials he did, if not the first. Um, and then years later, I got to do Carnegie, and I fucking stalked the stage just like George. George is an absolute role model for me. I absolutely adore him. He's a brilliant, brilliant man. I don't know, Bill Hicks make it over here as well. Yeah. Yeah. George Carlin was very much of that ilk. Like George was about as smart, smarter actually than than, um, than um, Bill. But the, uh, oh. I consider him the smartest man oh. I've ever met. Yes. Oh. Yes. So you know, when I met him, it was a dream come true. When I worked with him, it was an absolute dream come true. But the thing that I didn't expect to discover about George Carlin was how fucking committed he was to acting. Like you see people do one thing and they're really good at it, and you're like, well, shit, that must have been their dream. And obviously they put all their passion into him on it. And stand-up for George was just something to do while waiting for acting jobs. George wanted to be an actor more than anything else in the world and shit like that. And he treated it so fucking seriously. I used to sit there and write for a while, and then stop after a few pages, light a cigarette, start smoking and reading back. And then I'd get like three lines in and be like, well, I want to correct this, put the cigarette down. Start rewriting. Rewrite back to the same point I was. Cigarettes dead. Light another cigarette. Start reading. And the whole process began again. So basically, I would redraft in the middle of my drafting. And while I was redrafting, I would just sit there and appreciate my shit. Have a cigarette from the couple. Now, in the, in the new universe that I live in, I've become a stoner in the last year or two months. A hardcore, awake and day, 24 7, completely like, dedicated stoner, functioning stoner. Stone now, I can't even tell. Um, so, uh, in that time, I've, I've written, I haven't written a script yet, but I have written some Batman scripts for the comic books. So, I've written two Batman miniseries in the last, in the last year, and that has been awesome. Because I'll get really stoned, and I'll write, and one of two things will happen. Either I'll black out, <laughs> um, or I just don't remember stopping writing. And I'll forget about it for a few days, and then I'm sitting there going, oh shit, man, wasn't I writing something? And I'll go back and I'll look at it, and it's done. <laughs> Is it good? It's really good. <laughs> stone, he comes out. And he's like Bruce Willis. He's like, I got this kid. <laughs> and he takes over and shit, like Captain Chopper. He starts writing. It was so much better than, than what I, when I used to write when I was smoking cigarettes and whatnot. I mean, number one, writing Batman while stoned is just genius, because you can't write yourself into a corner. You know, it's just like, if you're backed into a corner, you're like, um, what fucking penguin should have been? <laughs> 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 Because it's just like you sit there and throw off all the fucking like conventions that you'd normally apply to things. Like, well, I can't say this because this is too, I don't know, uh, in, it's too way too subtle a joke. Or I'm not going to say this because this reflects me too much rather than the character. And now I'm just like, and weed is a real filter where I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to, I'll write it see what happens. You know, and then I read it. If it sucks, I'll fall it out. Let's see what, let's see what goes. So I'll start writing shit and just... Smoking and writing and smoking and writing. And I treat weed like I treat cigarettes. I'll light it and put it in the ashtray and shit like that. And just write while it burns. And like, <laughs> you know, I'm still pulling it in and shit like that. And, and Bruce has got to be there for Bruce's character and whatnot. We do it and he's totally good in it. But I'm looking for something very specific. And I keep hoping he'll do it. So I do another take. I'm like, that's good. Let's go one more and do another take. And it's still not emerging naturally and whatnot. I'm sitting there going, fuck, man. I just... I'm, I was praying that it would just accidentally happen so I don't have to go fucking talk to him. Because he's giving me that glare. He's going to glower at me. Oh, he's fucking glower at me. The whole movie, the dude was more bemused by me than anything else. It was this, a series of... <laughs> I just didn't fucking understand how I wound up in the film business. So I was just like, do I do it? Do I say it? Do I do 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 it?
say something. We're about to get out of the setup. And the AD goes, we good? We're moving on. I'm going to check the gate. And I go, uh, yeah, check. You know what? Check it. And I sit there for 20 seconds thinking. I nut up. And I'm like, you know what? Hold on. We're going to go one more. Give me a sec. I go over to Bruce. And I'm just like, hey, boss. <laughs> um, I don't know how to say this, man. So I'm just going to come out and say um, I think what we got is great. I was looking for something very specific. And I know this is going to go over like a lead balloon, but I was going to say it or else I'm going to hate myself for not saying it. What I'm looking for is this look that David Addison gave Maddie in the second season. <laughs> it was in the episode where Maddie thinks her father's cheating on her mother. I have, don't, maybe it was called I'm Curious Maddie. I don't think it was that. But it had started with a pop up to Rolling Stone running throughout and an awesome montage where you're stalking to death. Now, he was looking at me. But he actually looked away just so he could go like... <laughs> Kind of letting down the fucking Bugs Bunny of it all. I'm just kind of like, 